hello there. <laughs> it's Amanda and Eric from Hit Subscribe, back for another Facebook Live, where today we are going to talk about content marketing. We're going to actually pick your brain, mostly, um, for this. This is our sort of marketing guru right here. I would also like to point out that we are conducting today's Facebook Live indoors, and that is in solidarity with all of you northerners that are living at the North Pole or whatever. Yeah, sorry for that. So, yeah. It... Hope your igloos are beautiful and your snowmen are probably not made because it's too cold to go outside and make a snowman. Yeah, if you're somewhere that it's really cold, it's not very cold here, but we are inside in sympathy. We are you. pretending that it's very cold. It's also kind of dark. Anyway, with that non sequitur out of the way, um, content marketing. Yeah, right. let me, Fire ask, away let me ask you questions. <laughs> If I'm new to content marketing, where should I start? Um, let's see. If you are, so here's my take. If you're new to content marketing um, and you're a person that's kind of like going freelance or starting a business and you aren't sure what your niche is, um, then I would say that you ought to just mm -hmm. start producing content. Specifically, go out and find places that people are asking questions or that things aren't answered. Uh, in, in a satisfactory way, you know, take the pulse of people in what you think will be your niche and just start answering questions, you know, provide them with how to's, uh, define terms, that kind of thing. Uh, that is going to result over the course of time in you growing a following, getting traffic, um, and probably, you know, it'll start to bring in business in whatever it is you decide to do. So, um, that is the answer for somebody, I guess, like if you're watching this and you're setting up shops as a software developer or something. If you're an established company, um, the answer isn't too much different. It's just more that you're going to have a lot more precise focus on topic. So um, if you're an established company, you will probably want to um, invest in, you know, paying someone, hire a marketing person if you don't have one. Um, or a consultant to help you figure out what topics to write about and then um, produce that content either yourself or, you know, by hiring, say, hit subscribe if you have the budget, but, uh, you know, uh, hiring people to generate the content. So you want uh, help in figuring out what to write about, how to um, appeal to your target uh, audience, and then also uh, generate that content. The content is king. You want to generate a lot of content and then worry later about how to monetize it. Can you give an example, maybe like unrelated to tech? Um, so like, what if I have, um, let's see, I'm, I'm marketing some temporary pink hair dye. That's what I have some awesome uh, vegetable based pink hair dye. I want to sell to people. What are like my, what are my first blog posts about? Off the cuff, if um, we were marketing a product of that nature, you would probably want, um, and all of this would be pending how competitive these terms would be on Google, um, but you would want to have what I'd think of as canonical definitions. So like, what is hair dyeing? How does hair dyeing work? How do you dye your hair at home? Uh, should you hire a professional to do it or should you do it yourself? That kind of thing. Um, so those would be good examples of a topic in the niche. Um, you could do things like posts uh, surveying or reviewing different types of hair dye, um, all of that. And then, you know, maybe you would be working in a mention of your own there at some point. Um, but the general idea would be people probably have questions about dyeing their hair. How do I do it? Is it good for me uh, or bad for me or something? You know, I don't know what questions people ask about hair dye. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think you're doing good. But, but I mean, that's the point. Mm -hmm. It's not so much one of the biggest mistakes I think that people make when it comes to content marketing is to speak about what they want to speak about instead of what their constituents want to know about. Sure. So you see a lot of content that kind of misses the mark or is very opinion based or something. So you're manufacturing this hair dye and you're you know writing content about how great it is to dye your hair pink. Well, that's your opinion. It may or may not be shared by your users. The, the key is or users. <laughs> Well, they might use my, maybe they'll use my hair dye. I mean, uh, however, in my living over the course based. of my career, you know, your, how your end users, um, hmm. you, uh, anyway, the, the point is you want to see what the people you're presumably going to sell things to are actually wondering about. That's the difference between like content and product marketing and product marketing. You're, you know, out there raising brand awareness, plugging your product. Content marketing is answering questions people have and providing value, whether they buy your stuff or not. 
I guess maybe the place that we've seen this most in the wild is um, when, you know, we've been writing blog posts for a client over and over. And, like, when um, we're trying to define, um, you, you know, people might even ask, like, well, what is this thing that you're offering? And um, there's no blog post that we have to link to that other than, like, other people's, like, you know, uh, Wikipedia or, like, you know, another, uh, you know, maybe a competitor or something. And, you know, at some point you think, we should there should be a post that we link to that you made that answers the question what is thing you sell um so that's kind of an example of of something you would want like a uh, a defining you know what is this thing that i'm offering uh without any necessarily like sales pitch attached to it right yeah 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 all right let me ask you another question why are some companies effective with content marketing but others are not I think um, I'm kind of trying to think in my brain of when I've seen content marketing done wrong, if you will. It's like empathy. It's an empathy issue, isn't it? Like being able to put yourself in. So the most common, I guess, anti-pattern that I see um, comes from a desire to exclusively plug one's own product, which Mm. is natural. Mm. Uh, And this is kind of what I was getting at in the conversation before, but you built a thing and you want to tell the world how great it is. And you think... um, if you haven't been introduced to kind of how to do content marketing, you think the way to do that is to just kind of beat everyone over the head with your product here. It's features. Isn't it great? Like, um, I made a thing. I made a thing. I get it because I would probably tend to do that myself for things Mm -hmm. that I built. Um, But that is um, an ineffective tactic because people are typically not like searching for or desiring to read about, hey, uh, is there a product out here that solves this problem? I may not even be aware that I have. Like, that's just not what people are searching for. It's not what they're interested in. People aren't scouring the internet trying to figure out how to give you money. Um, <laughs> so that's, um, that's a common one that I see. And I think, yeah, to your point, um, maybe a lack of empathy with what your projected readers and personas care about. Oh, so another big one, I guess, um, where you see maybe content marketing done wrong is... Um, not picking out a persona, like mm. not really understanding who you're going to be talking to. So yeah. you kind of wind up writing this stuffy catch-all prose without a real audience in mind. Mm-hmm. That's another big one. You might see a lot of like passive voice or kind of grandstanding in the content where it's more about, I guess, trying to demonstrate to the world that you're awesome than it is about um, trying to give people uh, facts and yeah, value. Yeah, I often tell people when writing blog posts, like imagine – sitting down to explain something to your friend like how would you how would you organize that explanation and then what's your tone what how would you explain that to your friend and you like actually picture a person and think about explaining it to that person you'll find your tone um changes and also you become a lot more readable and a lot more likable i think um well okay let me let me get to another question are you done with that question Yes. Okay. How do you measure the effectiveness of content marketing? Oh, I like this. I want to hear about this. I just had the, I was literally just having this discussion with a client on a call oh. two hours ago. Um, the best way to measure the effectiveness of your spend on content marketing is uh, money. Are you, know, are you making additional are money? Are you making money? Uh, which is going to seem to fly in the face of everything I've just said. Uh, which is, you know, think about your audience, leads with value, don't plug your product. Um, But what you'll find is that when you've got like a robust content marketing um, uh, system in place, uh, a good funnel out there, which we've talked about before, um, it's bringing in traffic and that traffic is learning about your offering and you um, and you're solving their problems. And some of them are converting and buying because the the point of the content marketing is that it's a long play that's designed to qualify um, potential customers and sort of, you know, shunt away the people that wouldn't be buyers while drawing in the ones that will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is still a thing that you do ultimately at the end of the day to make money. So if you have some nice marketing automation schemes in place, there are ways that you can sort of track the effectiveness of something like a blog post or a video 
all the way on through to the point where people buy from you. Yeah. That's a pretty sophisticated setup. It's kind of hard to do. This is sort of the holy grail of content marketing is to be able to prove that you're... Um... <laughs> Strategic cat squirting. We have a very noisy begging cat over here. Um, I'm a hungry monster. The holy grail is to be able to prove that you're doing um, right by your clients in terms of earning an ROI. Not always easy or possible um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, not invested in the tooling or maybe you just haven't put together the kind of infrastructure where you can trace that. So other good ways to measure the effectiveness of content marketing um, that I can kind of rattle off uh, traffic, you know, are people coming to the site. Uh, you're attracting more visitors. If you have Google Analytics, you can uh, use that. There are other tools that will approximate traffic. Um, are you ranking on the search results page? Organic mm -hmm. search is a big um, driver of content marketing. It's a big factor in, in what you should be doing. So are, you know, if you go and Google pink hair dye, is it your company that appears there? Uh, that's a good way to measure it. Um, engagement is another one. Uh, are people commenting? Are people tweeting your blog posts, talking about them? Uh, engagement is a great sign that you're doing something right mm -hmm. and that people value what you're doing. Um, I think if you could figure out, too, on average, how many people um, convert in a way that gets you money f uh, per visitor to the site, like then, you know, you can you can more easily tie money into visitors and what kind of posts um, are bringing in your money and which ones aren't. Yeah, absolutely. We're always kind of trying to get to that, at least with back of the napkin math where you can say like, all right, if, you know, 10,000 people see this blog post over its lifetime, we can assume that, you know, I don't know, 3% of them will click on the mm -hmm. uh, trial download for this product page. And then of those, you know, X percent will actually download. So you can kind of uh, run some numbers that way and say, all right, um, over the course of the lifetime of this post, if we get an X views, it'll be worth Y dollars to the yeah. client. It's kind of the holy grail of content marketing is to boil it down to how much money uh, is this actually going to make me and can I get ROI? Um, if we're new, no, wait, where, I, sorry, I'm a terrible interviewer, I already asked that question. How long does it take to see positive results from investing in quality content? Oh, what a great question that I asked that I didn't make up. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> uh, how long does it take to see results? This is a hard question to answer for mm -hmm. the general out this there. is going to change for everybody, right? Right. So we have a, um, a client. It's a very large client that you have certainly heard of. Mm -hmm. um, the nature of the arrangement with them. I don't know. I'm going to mention them by name, but you have heard of them. Yes. They are one of the organizations that dominate the internet. Yes. When we uh, do content for them, they're going to see results almost immediately because, you know, the real big boys out there in terms of um, web presence have a lot of what's known as domain authority. So this is not our client, but take Wikipedia. If you write some page on Wikipedia, it's going to rank like instantly. Yeah. Because Google regards Wikipedia or Bing or whatever search engine you're using, regards Wikipedia as a trusted canonical source. So if you are very trusted, if you have a lot of what's called domain authority, um, you, will, you will get ranked very quickly, and that starts to bring in traffic immediately. So, um, you know, we have seen results from content that we've done in as little as like two weeks if yeah. you're a seriously high authority site. It does take a little bit for Google to index even like the highest authority yeah. site though, right? So you'll, you'll weeks, need a couple weeks, weeks no matter who you are. You can um, Google but it, it might be don't weeks. think in terms of a couple weeks for any of you out there. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're not a company <laughs> yeah. that has a gigantic market cap and presence. Um, you are probably on average... Oh, under the table That's, squirting. I'm not even squirting him. I feel bad. He's just hungry. Uh, I'm also hungry and I'm not making a big fuss of it. That is true. Um, if you are kind of an average site, you think more in terms of months, probably, mm -hmm. um, that it will take you to start ranking. And if you're a real beginner site, like we have this site that we're building um, called Make Me a Programmer that's aimed at people considering a, a career in programming. And right now we're just writing blog posts that answer questions. For a brand new site like Make Me a Programmer, um, 
we started with articles for it in August, and what is it, almost February? Mm -hmm. We're only just starting to crack the top 10 of the search results for some really long tail keywords, meaning uh, there's not a ton of competition. So what is that, like six months to get into the top 10? And that's not even gonna be um, a significant amount of traffic. So I guess in the general sense, if you're um, a brand new site, brand new company, you're thinking that it will be years before probably on the order of years, you know, a year or two before you start seeing a lot of traffic. If you're fairly well established, you know, more in terms of months that you'll see a return. And if you're huge, um, you can see a return pretty quickly, weeks. Um, it's probably worth saying that, like, um, you could really easily corner the, the traffic market for something that's, say, hello. Yeah. yeah. the source of all the noise. Um, so if I have Amanda's Beautiful Sparkle Hair Dye, and that's my company, and I want to rank for Amanda's Beautiful Sparkle Hair Dye is the best hair dye of all time, and those are the keywords I'm going for, I'm going to be like number one for that really quickly. Problem is no one's searching for it. So if it also will depend on what you're trying to target. If you're trying to target something like how to dye hair, that might take way longer to get up there than Amanda's beautiful sparkle hair. I don't remember what I named my company. It was something sparkly and Amanda oriented. Oh, what a cuddle monster. It's a good cat. All right, well. I actually figured this might be the most effective way to get him to be quiet. Yeah, that's good work. And everybody likes a good cat. And everybody likes a good cat. I don't know what's happening. Right now. <laughs> I need to climb you. You um, are my Mount Everest. And on that weird note... Yeah, let's get out of here before things get even weirder. Even weirder. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hope you found that helpful. Uh, that was, ew, you have drool all over your shirt. Ew. Wow. <laughs> this cat's a drooler. He uh, likes to he likes to salivate when he's happy. Oh, it's a terrible story. Let's this, get out this of here. This took a turn for the gross. Let's get out of here. So anyway, tune in next week when... We'll try not to have a cat doing anything gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye everybody.